today we're talking about digital minimalism. Let's get warmed up. In the overlap between digital minimalism and data management, there's a couple key ideas that I focus on. The first idea is to keep only what you need. Idea number two, back up the important stuff. Even if you utilize nothing else on its own, these two principles will create effective organization. The goal is to know where my files are and to protect them. Overall, I have five categories that I want to account for. Final videos, final images, general photos, documents, and current projects. First up is my iPhone. My iPhone holds general photos, final images, and some media for current projects. Next up is my laptop. My laptop holds current projects, final images, and documents for things like school and work. This is my 250GB SSD. It holds documents, general photos, and final images. Next is my 500GB external SSD, which only holds current projects and serves as additional space for what I can't hold on my laptop. These are my two SD cards, one 256GB, which is in my camera, and one 128GB, which is strictly a backup. Both of my SD cards only hold current projects. And then I have YouTube. I keep all my final videos in YouTube. So, how does the system look in terms of redundancy? Let's see. This system leaves me with one location for final videos, three locations for final images, two locations for general photos, two locations for documents, and three locations for current projects. The first thing I wanna go through is the iPhone and why I think it's so great with the iOS 14 update. So the iOS 14 update gave Apple users the functionality that Android users have had for years, but regardless, I'm still happy to see it, even though it took so long. And what this is, is widgets and more customization to your screens. Now I have a really simple, clean phone layout that helps me stay on task and not be distracted by random apps that I want to check into. So on my home screen, I have two main things and then 12 apps. I have weather and maps for easy access. Uh, the other apps I keep on here are Calendar, Quack, Bear, Howide, Photos, Settings, Lightroom, Filmic Pro, Phone, Safari, Messages, and Spotify. Most of these are self-explanatory, but I'll run through a couple that you might not know. Lightroom is the app that I like best for editing photos, and I have Adobe Access, so I might as well use it. Filmic Pro allows me to get really high quality video on the go from my phone, which is nice. Howide is the same thing for photos, it lets me shoot raw. Bear, which is, I think, a better note-taking app than Notes, and it also connects to Macs if you have a Mac as well. And then Spotify, music, can't go without it. Gotta have it. I'm not totally crazy, I have other apps, I promise, but they're all stashed away in the app library, so all you have to do is swipe over just one quick swipe, and then bang, I have all my apps, I can search them, and they're alphabetically ordered. Uh, another great thing is that on this screen, it doesn't show notifications, so I could have like six Snapchat notifications. I never have six Snapchat notifications. But if I did, I wouldn't see any of them on the screen. So now for the storage side of things, photos. Pretty much the only thing I really keep on my phone is photos and videos. Uh, there's not really much other media that I would keep on there. So I, if I go into photos, what I really try to stay on top of is not letting things pile up, particularly memes and duplicates. I think we've all seen this at some point or another where someone's taking photos or you're taking photos of someone and we're just spamming the shutter button and you end up with like 45 photos that all look really similar. Yeah. So what I try to do is get down to the best one that I actually want and delete the rest. I also send and receive a lot of memes. Um, I try to go through and delete them unless they're particularly funny and I feel the need to save them. But the best thing that I've learned is that Apple's recently added tool, I use recently very loosely, the tool where you screenshot something and then it lets you choose what you want to do very specifically with a screenshot. You can crop it and then just send it to someone and then not have it saved on your phone. And that's a really nice option uh, as opposed to just screenshotting it, sending it, and then it's just sitting there. You can cut out the part where you have to go in and delete it after. And as I said earlier, what I keep on my iPhone is really just photos from everyday life and then final projects that I want to use for my social media like Instagram uploads or social media profile pictures. Next up is my laptop. It does not have a ton of storage. The hard drive is 256 gigabytes. 
so not a ton going on there. So what I try to keep on there is final images, ongoing projects, and assets. This helps my laptop stay relatively clean and orderly, which is nice because it's where I do all of my work. So my home screen, I keep four things, just Recycle Bin, Firefox, Spotify, Adobe Creative Cloud. Firefox, Spotify, Adobe Creative Cloud encapsulate 90% of the things that I want to use my computer for. So I keep them right there and they branch out into anything else that I need. The other thing that I'm using really often is File Explorer. Okay, so if I go to my PC, the first thing that we have here is 3D objects, which I've tried to delete. I don't know how to get rid of it. I wish I could. And then I have desktop, which is mostly blank. And then documents where I actually keep some stuff. So in documents, I have some folders, a couple that are automatically generated from third party apps. And then one for an internship, one for writing, some miscellaneous stuff such as assets and short term Photoshop projects. But the main folder here is Louisville. If I go into Louisville, I have alumni association, first build, junior, research, senior, and a test folder that I was using to back up. So for example, we'll go into senior. I have all my classes from senior year. In these folders, I keep all my work from school pertinent to that class. And that's really it. Not a lot to keep there. So as far as documents go, uh, pretty lean. Downloads, I have a lot of downloads right now and I can definitely clear these out, but I wanna make sure that I don't need them for the project that I was working on for class. So I'll wait a couple weeks and then I'll go and delete them. Uh, but for the most part, I clean these out fairly often. Most of the time, if I need something, then I'll store it in a location that I know. Uh, so I try not to let stuff hover around in downloads for too long. Next up is music, uh -huh. uh, Team Spotify. Then I have pictures. Pictures, pretty low key. The important folder here is edits. This edits folder is all of the photos that I've really spent a lot of time on editing and really consider to be like part of my portfolio. And I only keep the edits, not the raw files, just the edits. I'll keep the raw files somewhere locally or on another hard drive until I get through editing them. But once I have the edits that I want, I clean out the raw files because they're huge. Next up, videos. Videos I keep pretty low key as well. I have some archives here and this will actually be ported onto my 250 gigabyte SSD. Captures automatically there, could not get rid of it. Current, this is current projects that I'm working on. So stuff will stay there until I'm finished with it. And then I'll move it somewhere else for it to sit until I can delete it. And then the last thing here is local disk. So it looks the same as everyone else's computer. All right, so that concludes the laptop section. Next up is my 250 gigabyte SSD. And then the main folders here are photos and documents. Documents, this is just a straight backup from that little folder from before. The only exception is that this has a freshman and sophomore year folder, which has the documents from freshman and sophomore year that I want to take off my hard drive to save up some space then. Next up is photos. Here I have really three main sections of the Lightroom folders automatically generated. I have iPhone, so if I click in here, I have my iPhone 7. And here you can see I have about I believe 1100 photos. I don't know, I know it might not be exactly minimal to keep 1100 photos just sitting there, but I don't want to delete them and I do value them, so they will remain there. And then I do the same thing with my iPhone SE. Uh, I back it up occasionally. I don't have a ton of photos on my iPhone SE because I've had it in quarantine during school, so I haven't taken a lot of photos on it. <laughs> back out of here, I go to edits, and this is the same edits folder from before. I have a raw folder where I keep some unedited photos. Again, I keep this backed up regularly. If I complete some new projects, then I'll go in there and back stuff up. Otherwise, it remains the same because I haven't been taking a lot of photos as of late. And that is everything on my 250 gigabyte SSD. Then I have my 500 gigabyte SSD, which I use mostly for runover storage of ongoing projects. So if I don't have enough space on my laptop, I'll put stuff here. And I keep a lot of raw video files on here as well, but usually delete them pretty quickly after I'm done with the respective project. This one is really simple. Photos don't worry about because I don't have any photos on here. I should put the raws from the other one in here. If I go into video, everything is just what it seems to be labeled. I have After Effects projects, exports, which is all my final cuts or test cuts, Premiere Pro projects, Premiere Pro saves, proxies and raw footage. Raw footage is just imported straight from camera and proxies are ported from Premiere in here to keep them somewhere that I know where they are. As you can see in raw footage, I have some dated folders and it's pretty clean, not a lot in here, minimal. And that's everything on my 500 gigabyte SSD. A lot of empty space right now, 
it's only using 50 gigabytes and has about 400 left. As I stated earlier, 128 gigabyte SD card, just to back up in case I need it. And the last thing that I want to talk about really is cloud services. All right, so if I head to YouTube Studio and then go on down to content, I can see right here all the stuff that I just uploaded the other day and some other stuff that's more public. Craig Adams made a great recommendation on his digital minimalism video to just keep video projects in here. And I thought, yeah, uh, that totally works for me. All my videos are really short, so it's not a hassle for me to just upload these, let them sit in there on YouTube servers instead of my hard drive, and I can download them back in fine quality if I need to. But realistically, I won't need to, and having them just sitting on the internet on YouTube is a great storage unit on its own. So stuff that you guys see, I keep public, and then I have other projects that are more personal or work-related that I keep private, and I can just store there. It's super simple, saves up a lot of space because as we all know, full video projects are pretty large. So that's the system I have for my digital minimalism storage organization. Uh, I know it's not perfect, but it is working for me right now. And I think like minimalism in general, it's just gonna keep on changing and evolving to fit my needs. And I'll keep trying out new things to see what works and what doesn't. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas to improve my system, let me know. I'd love to hear them. I'm really looking for a way to automatically back up a folder without duplicating anything and just altering the files that were changed and replacing those, I guess. Uh, so if you know how to do that for free or cheap, let me know. That's what I want to figure out. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. Why did I sit like that? Okay, please tell me it's still recording.